um lastly to kind of uh finish up on this i'm gonna see should we play a bit of this yeah this woman's debate on cnn was pretty insightful about the other side of covid or it was happening in terms of um barton isn't it and how they're sort of handling it and going forward i think her debate was pretty enlightening in terms of trying to understand why there's some bar owners out there managers or p owners of businesses who are hesitant to accept the mandate being bestowed upon them to close up their businesses because they don't essentially want to put their employees at risk in terms of having no future being able to earn no money and they also want to be able to run their businesses isn't it they want to be able to take that calculated risk i'm not really opposed to it i think if you want to open your doors and customers are willing to come in then do what you will need to do but i think mandate everyone to close up shop especially when most governments aren't necessarily putting into anything anything into anything in place unless yeah apart from maybe the further that we have in the uk that's allowing some companies to claim up to 80 percent of salaries to pay whoever they kind of want to keep on most governments are sort of just allow you know leaving businesses to sort of you know fend for themselves so if you're going to do that you have to expect or you have to be accepting of some people resisting and just wanting to open their business up and do what they want to do but i thought this debate on cnn was really really insightful i'm gonna play it for you now some Texans are pushing back against uh, some of the governor's rollbacks to reopening as coronavirus cases soar in the state. Dozens of bar owners, for example, are suing the governor for shutting down their bars, claiming the closures are unconstitutional, and many say that they are on the verge of bankruptcy. Health experts say bars are perfect breeding grounds for the virus. So Gabrielle Ellison is one of those bar owners suing the governor and she owns Big Daddy Zanes in Odessa, Texas. And then Jared Woodfill is the attorney representing the group of bar owners. And so welcome to, to both of you. And, and Gabrielle, I just wanted to hear from, from you first, just briefly. Tell me why you want to defy the governor, you know, and defy the warnings from health officials and keep your bar open. Well, if, if I don't, I'm going to lose my bar. If I don't, my employees are not going to be able to eat. And, and I believe we have rights that are being trampled on right now um this is my life savings this is my daddy's life savings i can't can't afford to lose it i can't do it okay i want to come back to that with some counterpoints in a second but but, but jared I, then i want to hear from you because i know gabrielle is one of many bar owners you're representing in this lawsuit what is it that you're arguing like why should these bars remain open Sure. Well, there's a whole pro host of problems with Governor I'm Abbott's order. A little bit. Let's go back to that. Nails or your hair done. You're wearing a mask. You're social distancing. If you argue that if it happens, they will have to fast forward a little bit. Bear with me. Couple shots of tequila. Are you going to keep that mask on? I'm just saying there, there, are, there is another way to look at this. Let me, let me, let me, let me just offer a different perspective. Well, let me, let, hang on, hang on. Let me offer a different perspective. The nation's leading expert on infectious diseases and a member of the White House Coronavirus Task Force, Dr. Fauci, says don't do it. Here he is. A uh, congregation at a bar inside is bad news. We really got to stop that right now when you have areas that are surging like we see right now. But in answer to your question, a little bit more granular, outdoor is always better than indoor. If you're outdoor distance, as Bob said, wear a mask if you can, but you can have some social interaction. But he says, Jared, specifically, bars really not good. I mean, again, this is the leading expert on infectious diseases in the country. Why is he well, let's wrong? Look, sure. Well, let's look at his statements. In fact, I guess the, the reason why I'd say he's wrong and the reason it's hard to listen to medical experts because they're always going to go for the, they're always going to come to the worst case scenario, right? Their, their job isn't to save the economy. Their job isn't to look for ways to sort of get out of this with the least amount of economic damage. Um, their job is to sort of look at it from a health perspective and, you know, essentially try and save as many lives as they can. And if it was up to a doctor, right, the moment you fall off a skateboard and you twist, you break your arm or you break or cr fracture your wrist, they probably won't allow you to skateboard again for the rest of your life, right? How many times have you heard of a story of an athlete succumbing to an injury and him and he or she being told by some sort of medical professional that they wouldn't necessarily walk again? They won't be able to use their arm again, their shoulder again, whatever it may be. And they always defy the odds for the most part, right? So it's their job to sort of lay down the worst case scenario so that you maybe, you maybe have something to fight against, maybe something to push against. I'm not too sure, but to take their advice in terms of what a business owner should do i understand the reservations behind it i really do because if this woman ends up listening to dr fauci her business would never reopen again especially if you have no outdoor seating or outdoor spaces because this is under the assumptions that every bar has one and not everyone does <clears throat> like some of our borrowers a bar, a bit, a bit. A bar so, yeah. 
savings account, but but you were also arrested. Yeah, let's hit this. No, and to that point, to that point, to that point. And hey, this excellent point she makes regarding the bar owner, right? That she's actually taking money out of her from her savings to pay her staff members now because the government has stepped in to allow her any sort of assistance. Let me let me put, put this to, to Gabrielle, because I understand this is about protecting your employees. You know, you have been paying them. I was reading the notes. You know, you've been paying them out of your own savings account. But but you were also arrested a month ago for defying the order. So so maybe you're not worried yourself about getting coronavirus. But if you care as much as it sounds like you do about your own employees, why would you want to put them in harm's way? And it kind of feels a bit patronizing as well, coming from a news broadcaster whose job has never is never going to be affected by coronavirus lockdown, right? The more we have to be stay in place and work from home, she's going to have a job regardless. The more times they're able to kind of drum up the unnecessary sort of fervor behind the virus and sort of like, you know, scaremonger people, she's still going to have a job. The more politically divided the United States are, she's still going to have a job. So to be this patronizing to an actual business owner, who's actually have to put some money on the line, has some skin in the game, is really really disconcerting it kind of reminds me of like a Kay Bailey interview sure I care about him a lot uh and and I would I'd like to invite Abbott and I'd like to invite Fulci and I'd like to invite them all to my bar I care about them we're not gonna we're not this is not gonna go away we have got to learn how to live with this and what I do care about is that their children eat I care about that they're they're able to pay their house payments and they're not out on the street but I Gabrielle, people are head. dying. People are dying from this. I mean, we have all these numbers on the side of the screen of all these cases and all these deaths. You are you are people putting are them at, at harm's risk. Because of the economy. They are going to die because of the economy. What is it your right or anybody else's right to take our rights away? It is nobody's right. You don't have that right. We are going to starve. You might the rights thing, I, I'm a bit mismoved that one, but I do have sympathy for it. And again, I want to stop it there. You pl you can play the entire thing yourself. It's called Bar on the Defense when it's to stay open despite warnings. I'll link in the show notes, but there is no real easy answer to that, isn't it, really? If you're a bar owner and you are not receiving any support from the government, the government doesn't seem to have any sort of idea how to deal with it properly, especially in the United States. They've sort of been it's incredibly haphazard. I mentioned before, I think the United States was a really waste opportunity. They could have really done some interesting things and in how they could fight COVID in terms of how they, you know, independently govern each state. They could have done some interesting approaches, tried out some different experiments in terms of how they kind of bring it um under some sort of you know under some sort of level of control but they haven't they all sort of like you know essentially either turned a blind eye collectively or just put on the baby gloves but with no real direction from the people that you vote in power to sort of help put make you make these kind of tough decisions businesses are going to have to make the tough decisions themselves and so are the customers and patrons that sort of you know um visit these places on a daily or weekly basis if they want to take the risk and go to a bar and hang out they they're more than willing to they have to accept the consequences and so are the bar owners right if they have you know one positive covid test they're going to get locked down for good so i don't necessarily know what the right answer is but i know the not the best option is having some news broadcaster kind of you know patronize you on tv and make you feel like an idiot or make you feel as if like you're not compassionate because you're, you're putting <clears throat> people's lives at risk when in fact if you don't get your employees back to, um employed or you don't allow them to earn a living they're also going to have their families lives put at risk because they're going to be able to pay their bills or not be able to pay their rent or be able to put their kids through school or provide them with meals and these are all things that the u.s government doesn't seem to be willing and or able to step in and do for people right You've got Trump here bragging about putting up the wall still and not really providing any sort of support, not really quelling people's fears or inspiring any kind of hope. It's just a really bizarre place to be in. But again, you'd never who the fault in 2020 you'd see a battle between a business, small business owner and a new broadcaster about how they should best operate their business. It really is an encapsulation of what's happening in 2020.